Week two in college football gave us upsets, drama, and near misses. So I had to give you the five best performances from week two and the five worst performances from week two. You guys make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show because sharing is caring. Let's get into the list though. First up, you had the Texas Longhorns march on up to the big house and take care of Michigan. 31 to 12, Sark and Quinn Ewers did their thing and proved that they're one of the best teams in the country right now. Northern Illinois took on the Golden Domers in what was supposed to be a blowout win for Notre Dame, but nope, the Salukis, their running back head coach, everything that they're not supposed to be came out with the big win. Good job, Salukis. Tennessee, oh, their game travels. They went out to Charlotte to play NC State, and they beat them boys 51 to 10. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of the young quarterback, Nico. Might end up on that Heisman stage. Arizona State 30, Mississippi State 23. Oh, so the team that was supposed to finish last in the Big 12, oh, they went against the vaunted SEC, and you know what Kenny Dillingham did? Came out with a win. Good job, forks up. Nebraska 28, Colorado 10. I told you these teams were gonna go in two different directions depending on who won. Good job on Dylan Riola, young quarterback, true freshman, didn't turn the ball over. Matt Rule's defense came out and gave them a big enough lead that they could just hold on to. Good job, Nebraska. And the best of the best, the goat of the weekend, the Cal Bears 21, Auburn 14. Justin Wilcox took his team into the heart of SEC country, battled the refs, battled everything in between, and came out with the win. Hell of a weekend. And now the five worst performances in week two of college football. We had Penn State 34, Bowling Green 27. You might say, but George, they won. There's no way that Penn State fans can feel good about potentially winning a Big Ten championship when your defense can't get stops against Bowling Green. Notre Dame lost to NIU Northern Illinois, and this is going to send Marcus Freeman back to the drawing board at the quarterback position because Riley Leonard, who was just okay versus Texas A&M, was downright bad in this game, and Notre Dame got to figure something out. Michigan got absolutely beat down in the big house, only put up 12 points and gave up 31 to Texas. Lord have mercy, Sharon Moore and the Michigan faithful are spinning right now. They're like, wait, how many games are we going to lose? And we got to play USC soon too? Mm, might not be pretty. Alabama is on this list after beating South Florida. But Georgia was 42 to 16. What are you talking about? It was 13 to 14 going into the fourth quarter. And this Alabama team did not look anything like that Nick Saban teams, and you cannot feel confident about winning the SEC or even a college football berth with a performance like this when it took the fourth quarter to barely pull away. And for the second week in a row, my Oregon Ducks are on this list after squeaking by Boise State. Oregon defense looks good. The Oregon special teams looks phenomenal. The Oregon offense, again, is the only people that should be on this list after another inconsistent performance. And we're going to see if they can get better next week. And the team that is in the pits, that's the opposite of the king of the hill for the best performances of the week, is Colorado, who got absolutely manhandled by Nebraska. Deion Sanders, Shadour, and everybody, listen, this is not what it was supposed to look like, and it is absolute child abuse. What is happening to Shador behind that offensive line? Dion, figure something out, man.